You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. In today's episode, we answer questions asked by our listeners uh, and viewers, just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. So this is when we talk about current events. We like to tell funny stories. We have a great time. We mention our sponsors. Today's intro was 39 minutes long. After that, we got to the fitness questions. Let me give you a rundown of today's entire episode. We open up by talking about Jake Paul. He's causing more problems, that guy. Oh, man, this guy. Is he going to get himself a fight with uh, one of the greatest fighters of all time? We'll see what happens. He'll get a fight somewhere. Then Adam and I have an intervention with Justin. Uh, we're working with a company called Caldera that makes some of the best natural skincare products you can get anywhere. And Justin's gator skin could totally be yeah. <laughs> utilize some of this stuff. So It's like snowing in here sometimes. He'll be trying it out, and uh, we'll be reporting back with the results. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out Caldera, um, use the Mind Pump discount. Go to Caldera Lab. That's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump, get 20% off. Then we talk about Apple refusing to refund a mother $16,000 because How her, could you, her, Apple? Her six-year-old daughter or, or child or son was uh, racking up uh, those in-store purchases, so we'll see what happens. Then we talk about Tom Cruise yelling at his staff for not wearing masks <laughs> on the set of a movie. Uh, that led us to talk about uh, Gavin Newsom, our favorite governor of all time, and the recall that might happen. I just want to give him a hug. Then we talk about YouTube having naked yoga on their platform, but it looks like it's being pulled down. Yeah. Uh, then I bring up a woman named Miriam Rodriguez, probably one of the most badass moms of all time. You'll love that story. She's an American hero. Or then, Mexican, I should say. That's it. Yeah, then, sorry. <laughs> then I compare uh, Magic Spoon cereal to Fruit Loop cereal and the macros. Now, Magic Spoon cereal tastes like Fruit Loops. They also have other flavors, by the way. Tastes really good, but it's got no sugar, and it's very, very high in protein. In fact, a bowl of Magic Spoon cereal will give you over 40 grams of high-quality protein and no sugar. It's crazy. Um, go check them out. And again, of course, use the Mind Pump discount. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. And then Justin gives us a little theory on Boba Fett. You're welcome. Where'd he come from? Yeah. Uh, then we got to the questions. The first one, this person wants to know if you can manipulate a flat bench press to work the upper chest more since they don't have access to an incline uh, bench press. The next question, this person wants to know why their grip fails when they do pull-ups, but they're strong when they do deadlifts. Like, what the heck's going on? Mystery. The third question, this person wants to know why we're so anti-cardio. We're not, uh, but we kind of explain ourselves in that part of the episode. Mm. And then the final question, this person wants to know what sports community uh, usually underutilizes resistance training. More sports ball talk. Also, this month we've taken uh, three types of people, uh, which you probably fall into one of these categories, and we've developed workout bundles for each one. Okay, so each workout bundle is about nine months of exercise programming. That means all your workouts are planned out for you. You've got exercise videos teaching you how to do the workouts. Um, it's amazing. It's everything you need to get into amazing shape. But here's the three categories. Okay, See if you fit into one of them. The first one is the new to weightlifting bu bundle. This is for people who are brand new to resistance training or who haven't done it for a long time. The second bundle is called the body transformation bundle. This is for those of you who are intermediate. So you've been working out for a little while and you're ready to step up your game. And then the third bundle is the new year's extreme intensity bundle. This is an advanced bundle for those of you who've been working out for a long time. Now, all of them are severely discounted, and they all include one year of access to our Mind Pump private forum for free. So in the private forum, there's 3,000 members. You can go in there. You can ask fitness questions. You can post your lifts, get people to critique your form. You can read funny memes, get in debates with people. Likes and hearts galore. And, and Adam, Justin, and myself are in there uh, daily, so you get to see us as well. Go check these bundles out. See if they work for you. By the way, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can sign up, try it out for a full month, and if it doesn't blow your mind, of course, you can get a full refund. Go check them out. It's at mapsdecember.com. Again, that's maps, M-A-P-S, December.com. Is that still a saying? Do people still say that? Why, why? It's on like Donkey Kong. Just old guys like you. I, I, sometimes I think about that. Like it's I'll very it. much old, you know. Dudes. Yeah, so sometimes I'll say things and I look at my kids like, do they even know what the hell I'm talking about? Well, they don't about? even, first of all, they don't know what Donkey Kong is, do they? 
Did Donkey it, Kong's still a video game. Is Every it? time I hang out with Christina uh, Rice, it, it's always like I'm, I'm referring stuff to a wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like true. she has no idea what I'm talking about. You know what's a test? So but. check this out, right? Let's see if um, let's see if Andrew falls for this. So well, that, that's our camera guy in the back there on there. Andrew, use your hand and pretend like you're on the phone. Oh, okay, so he's uh, he's right. past the cusp. Right. So do, if, do, young kids, do they do this? This. They go like this? Go up to a little kid and say, hey, pretend like, like you're on the hand, phone. Like a, like a karate chop? Yeah, you say, pretend like you're on the phone, and they'll go like this. Really? Yes, uh, they don't do this. They don't do uh, that? No, this is this is for those of us who remember the cord, the phone with right. the cord. Because you had two like round holes, one you speak into, one you listen to. Yes. Or, yeah. or like the flip phones, because flip phones were still cell phones. Kind of, were... but I did it to my kids. <laughs> I did it to my daughter. Yeah. So pretend like you're on the phone with your hand. And then when you ask Doug, he goes like this. Doug is <laughs> 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 no, and then he's got the he's got the one thing that's hello no hello? no he does smoke signal. <laughs> uh, I remember when I said that one checks the bingo box. I remember when I was when I was training Doug and he's like, hey, I just got a tablet, just like the one I had when I was a kid. I'm like, let me see, and he's like a stone. He's like, it's only good for one use though. Hey, thou shalt not murder. Please tell me you guys are following the drama that Jake Paul is doing right now. Oh, dude. Well, we talked about it. And, uh, uh, yeah, or, but you saw after the after, escalated after we got off. Oh, where he threw, he was throwing shit at the yeah, he, jiu-jitsu coach. Yeah, wow. Do you, you know what he's doing too? He, he's he's con- connoring Connor, the ultimate troll. So yeah, he, first of all, he drives over to homeboys. You know his like, jujitsu coach's school. I yeah, think. punks the fuck out of him. Throws toilet paper at his face. Gets gets it shot. Shoots it on camera. Takes that picture as his profile pic know, now, dude. and then. It's better. He unfollows everybody except for two people. He's following Connor's wife and that <laughs> yeah. and that jujitsu guy's yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. Only two people he's following. Yeah. You know what, dude? That's dude, funny. he's a, getting the fight. He's going to get the fight. Here's the thing: I don't feel bad for for McGregor. I don't I either. He, this is he does McGregor's game. It is his game. But McGregor is a better fighter. Uh, Paul is better at the social media fucking with. I, I would love. He's, to, he, that's, that's all he's, he's done the last few Correct. years. Yeah. Correct. I cannot wait to hear what Connor has to say. Eventually, he's going to have to come out. And well, say did something. you see? So Dana White is brilliant. Did you hear what Dana White did? No, because he was talking he shit said, about Dana White too. He said so, Amanda Nunes. He should have yes. Amanda Nunes. Yes, he said, that. "I'll let you fight Amanda Nunes." And Amanda Nunes says, "I'm in." <laughs> now tell me. Now that's, I 100 percent would love that. That's like chess. It's like they're playing yes. chess. Yeah. Jake said check. And now Dana White came back and said, "No, check back to you because Jake's. What does he do? Does he say if he if he fights Amanda Nunes, if he wins, it's a loss. It's stupid. He beat up. But if he gets his ass kicked, he looks stupid. He looks even yeah crazier. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Which yeah. is what will happen. Yeah, it's a loss. She'll loss. break him off. Yeah. Well, she's tiny though, isn't she? I mean, I don't know. Man. She's not that she that small. Packs she packs a punch. Which, let's dude. let's see where Amanda Nunes is. Well, she's a well. she's a bantam or fly. She's not. Heavy. She's that light, bro. Here's the deal. If they just do boxing only, uh, she knocks dudes out. You know, in in training camp. Yes, I know that. But if she just does boxing with a big guy, that's not a good. Thing. If they do MMA, then yeah, I, I'll give it to her. She'll yeah. just hit the ground with him, and then he's yeah he's dead meat. But that's uh, that's that's a smart 135 pounds. Dude. She's still a, she's still that's small. not that yeah. tiny. I mean, it's small, but it's not. And that. it's and it's like boxing, you know, purely. So yeah, you're right. I, mean, I don't know that she'll have a great. I'll, I'll tell you. With so I'll it, tell I, you what though. Have you ever had like a, a legit female fighter uh, like hit like pads or hit you? You ever feel that? I've had I've had a, a Muay Thai girl kick my leg, and that fucking killed me. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, my I, whole leg was black and blue. Oh, I held pads for one, and it was uh, it was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh my god! Yeah, when they get that power down, it's yeah. it's pretty. Yeah. So what do you think Snappy. is so what do you think is going to happen? How does this unfold? I mean, uh, Jake is obviously going ham. I mean, he is. Well, here here's the thing: it puts the ball in Dana's court because if he's offering McGregor fifty million dollars, yeah. McGregor, you know, is looking at Dana and saying, "Why should I not do this? It's fifty million. What can you do for me?" Right? Because he's never made fifty he's million. Put the heat, yeah. He's he ever them. gotten paid fifty million? He never, right? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I know. mean, what do you do? If much, you're, yeah. What do you do if you're him? If I'm McGregor, yeah. If you're McGregor, what do you do? Do you do it at this point? If if I want to leave a legacy, like being a great fighter, I'll right. say no. But if I'm like, it's money, and I don't really don't care, I take it. Well, Fifty million because well, he's still like somewhat in his prime. Like he has more fights left in him. Like I mean, how many fights can I have to do to him make fifty million? I know this is. <laughs> I know. I know. It's I don't know it's it's crazy. And Matt, think about it. Dana White's his boss. It would I be mean, like. Do you, do you guys do it? Do you do it, Justin? 
this is like a fight I would want to do after I retired, you know, and yeah. you're just like, whatever, I need money. You know, that's well, what it feels like. I mean, me. I think he is, right? He, is but he fully, but I don't think he needs it, yeah, right? Or right. maybe not yet, right? I don't, I don't know. Have you seen the way he spends his money? Well, a proper yeah. 12 is crushing, isn't it? it oh, yeah, it's true. doing well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doing really well, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. And you know what? McGregor, I don't know if it's all an act, but he does come across as somebody that's, uh, you know, he, he, he'll he get shook and angry and emotional. Yeah. And Paul is poking every last button, you know, and he's going to keep pushing on him. Yeah. He's already harassing his jiu-jitsu coach. I, if he still ignores him, I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up at his house or does it's something. Cr- it's to- crazy that w- the power that this kid can have because of his social influence. Like, did you see, too, that uh, – I think now UFC, Dana White, uh, McGregor, and Jake Paul. If you Google like any of those four things, all Jake Paul's yeah, drama that he's doing right now with him is number surpasses one. Him. Yeah, yeah, millions and millions of searches. Now here's what he's I was going to end up fighting him. Now here's what I was thinking, right? Because <laughs> now the fight game is is professional, but there's a lot of guys in the fight game, and there's a lot of ways that it's run. Maybe not now, but in the bat in the past where it was a bit shady. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and it makes me think back to hip hop in the nineties with the shit talk. Mm-hmm. It, it, it went off the legal route and turned into like, you know, shooting at Gang each other. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Suge Knight hanging people over a balcony, yeah, right. getting them to sign a contract. At what point does Jake Paul get his ass kicked, you know, behind the scenes? He's yeah. just hanging out. And then next thing he knows, Nate Diaz shows up and beats yeah, the shit right at his front door. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, there, there's a very good chance something like that happens. Yes. You're yes. talking that much shit and you're doing stuff like that where you're going and taunting a bunch of fighters. Or like, even an amateur, yeah. a top amateur fighter who's well, like I I mean, this is how it goes down. You don't let you don't let your your coach or McGregor risk it. The the guy in there that's the loyal bro. I'm your your you're the let's say you hey, go break his arm for Exactly. Me. I'm the nobody. Nobody knows who I am. I'm not, I'm not I'm a purple belt. I'm not ranked anything, but I'm part of the crew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know I could still you that just kid. see him eating out. At yeah, somewhere you know what I'm saying. Go like, handle that yeah. shit. That's what's. That's how it's going to go down. It's that's, not going to be. They're not going to. He's got to watch his back. Every yeah, day. McGregor's not going to go fuck with the guy. It's going to be somebody who's a who's a grunt, who is all about the loyalty of of the crew. That's the part. That's totally. where I see this maybe going because it's mm-hmm. hard to turn down fifty million, and if he keeps getting in your face, the fans are going to want to see it at some point. Mainly just to see you kick his ass. But he's kind of disrespecting the, the sport of boxing and totally. MMA and whatever. I, you know, he needs to be careful because he keeps pushing it. It's like I said, it reminds me of the '90s when the shit talk got so it was selling records. Yeah, but then it got so bad that people started yeah. shooting each other and, and shit started happening. I just think that uh, yes, yeah, because everybody around them, it's not as, it's like they're yes. in cahoots, but it's like everybody else was like, oh, this is yeah. going down. Yeah, exactly, like, yeah, and then they get all heated. Exactly, fifty million though, man. I'm doing I know. It. I know. Wait, I'm doing, you're doing it. I'm right doing it. I mean, I would fight. I mean, Mike, it's a, yeah. That's I would a good fight payday. Mike Tyson in his prime for fifty million. <sighs> totally. What? No, no, no. Oh, he's, he's, I don't know. That could be. That could be, be permanent. That be permanent brain damage. Hold yeah. on a second. You just. I go out there and he throw a punch and fall down. Just ghost <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's you in the shoulder. Uh. You'd have to do that. The only way you would do that. There's no, there's no way you're actually but trying then to fight. Punches you right on the canvas. You yeah, know? like as you're like laying down. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Terrifying. Oh my god. Terrifying human being. But definitely, if you're McGregor, you're not getting hurt, right? I mean, there's. But I mean, some people would think that he has nothing to to gain from it except for fifty million dollars, which yeah. is a lot. That's yeah. a, that's a, that's it's, more than again more than he's ever made. Which, yeah. is, which is insane. Yeah. So anyway, Adam, I think this is a good time since we're on air now to uh, do the oh, intervention. Oh, the intervention right yeah, now? Yeah, let's do the Justin intervention. Oh, wow. So- Dude, what? Why are you guys always <laughs> ganging up on me, man? It's like, it's, so we had, oh, it's been a few years yeah, you know, no, since no, our this, last uh, intervention? Listen, Linda, listen. <laughs> so this you. is this one is actually different, right? So we had a cheese yeah. intervention already once. We're, <laughs> this is a new intervention. That was the second one. Jeez. Yeah. So yesterday was I was- coffee. Yesterday I was on the phone with Caldera. Mm-hmm. And we signed. We signed for all of 2021 now, and part oh, of the nice. de- so they like us, and yeah. our and our people like oh, us. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah, yeah, we're doing well. Yeah, they love it. Everything's all great. One request is uh, they think they can change your life and your dry, cracky skin. <laughs> yes. And they said, "Could you? Con- is this a challenge?" They're like, "We'll sign for the year, but can you convince Justin to start using and trying our product? We believe, yeah, that as good looking as he is already, we can make I mean, him." Yeah, and, better looking. And remember, Adam and I at first were opposed to this. We're like, listen, he's yeah. already you handsome. You got to keep him down. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. We can't, you don't want to get him you know, ahead of us. Yeah, so now you have to use their stuff. 
<sighs> to show everybody what time. All right. You know what I'm afraid is going to happen? Mm. <laughs> I'm afraid he's going to he's going to pour some of it on his on his hand. You know, Let's it's just it's going to disappear. It's going to absorb. <laughs> just absorb it. <laughs> Dude, they're so cracky. Have you guys seen my hands? Like I've just been doing all this stupid work. Like, yeah, oh man, he's going to ask you. Do you guys have this in gallons by chance? <laughs> <laughs> Can I shower it with it? Like, <laughs> yeah. those little bottles. They just they only, are they only supposed to last three days? <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, this is going to get expensive. You guys, you really want to do this? Hey, what if what if he actually has olive skin? We don't even know. He just rubs it on. He's like dark like me. Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Just come in and I'm just, oh, sheen. And, Swarthy. Uh, yeah. I really Rico. do, though. I want you to try it a little bit. So. Just call me Rico Suave. Oh, <laughs> Ave, Rico. Rico. <laughs> do you guys remember that guy? Yeah. <laughs> I, he uh, looked him Ger- up. What Ger- was his name? Oh, yeah. Gerardo. Gerardo. Yeah. yeah. I, I forgot who he was when you guys brought him up last time. And then when you brought him Bro, up. Bro, he wore tight jeans, no shirt, right? And cowboy boots. Yeah. And he, I feel, mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like he had a little fanny pack, too. And he was just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. shaking yeah. Just, just all over the place. He's all hips. Do you guys remember the, uh, it just made me think of this guy. Do you guys remember the wrestler uh, Ravishing Rick Rude? Of course. Yeah, dude. He was I awesome. loved him. <laughs> did you? Of course you did. <laughs> 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 That's, you thought yeah, you were Hilarious. Yeah, he used to around. come in. He used to do like the hair flip, and yeah. then he look at himself in the mirror and stuff like that. Don't you remember? That's totally Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. Do you remember what he would do? He would like call out a woman from the audience, yes. and he like make out with it. Look at yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Adam. Yeah. If Adam was a he puts his hands on his head and just uh. yeah. Didn't he like like when he would beat a guy? He uh. would do like a he'd like. He cut their hair. No, no. Yeah, did that's cu- Brutus the Barber beef. Oh, guy. you're right. You're right. That oh was like more than What kind of a fan Man, are you? Your uh, wrestling it's history it's is been a long time. It's questionable. Hey, you, you cocksuckers still be fucking watching this stuff. Dude, I don't watch uh, this anymore. No, ravishing Rick Rude when he'd beat a guy when they were knocked out, he'd go up to him and he'd like grind on him. <laughs> is that? <laughs> yeah, dude. He would do that. You know, he would do that oh, little dance over him. Right? Uh, yes. Yeah, he would yes. dance over him. With a little it was like, him. Brutus the Barber beefcake would cut their hair, and then there was the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Uh, that that guy, remember that? Remember the Million Dollar Man? Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, awesome. Yeah. There was uh, Coco Beware. Always wore the suit with all the money sign all over it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Dro- showed up at a limo, always the, to the, the junkyard the dog. Junkyard dog, dude, he was oh, the man. My yeah. God. British Listen, Bulldog guys. was the Listen, best. Listen, you guys. Hey, I got an article uh, yesterday. I read. Did you guys see the news on uh, Apple? Rowdy Piper. Apple that is uh, contesting the sixteen thousand uh, dollar suit that this lady's trying to put on him. What? So check this out. $16,000 for See, Apple. Come I know. Yeah, I know. And you, guys, you guys fart more money than Well, that. listen. So that's what's interesting, right? So the fact that they're My just, farts make right? It's no big deal to them, but they're, I think it's a principal thing. So this kid, uh, uh, f- five or six years old, I gotta remember, five or six years old, um, racked up sixteen thousand dollars on in-app purchases on his mom's oh, iPad. Whoa! Sixteen playing games with all the in-app purchases. And Apple's not going to refund it. No. In in what time span? Well, I think see. It, He's six years old. Doesn't matter. He's just, what do you mean? Doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Supposed to be parental. Yeah, bro. Blocks on. Yeah, that. but okay, but the, obviously the mom's not buying him sixteen thousand dollars worth of. Uh, come on. Oh, silly. see, I'm on Apple's side on this one. For a six-year-old? Yeah. That's going to look so bad for them. This is It's not worth 16 grand. Oh, you they're they're going to look bad. You think so? Yep. Absolutely. Oh, so I think you- It op- is a bad I say I think if you refund this, you open a can of worms. You refund- you give- Everybody's going to say it was my kid. Absolutely. Because they'll refer to it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's how I get my Amazon- That's why you That's why you can't- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't order Die Hard. <laughs> uh, what box is this? <laughs> I mean, seriously, though, you, you, you accept that, then how are you going to- Decide. See, there it is, right there. Sixteen thousand dollars. How old was he? Child's six year old. Six year old. Oh, Sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, okay. On my one day, so I read busy. the whole. I read the whole article, right? So the in app purchases. What the hell was he buying? They ranged between ninety nine dollar ninety nine up to uh, as high as ninety nine dollars. In one day, he racked up twenty one hundred dollars. Was the most. So that means this was over the course of like a month or two. Now, obviously, the kid, the parent is like she's super- a she's a she's a uh, she works from home. A, a mother that works from home and her kid had yeah, the, but you has can high, turn off that feature. I know you can. It's I mean it's all you can. There's you. This can, looks so bad on Apple. They're gonna they're, they're gonna lose more. This is gonna make them look really. They're gonna end up settling. I guarantee it. There's no settling. Way. Who settles? They don't settle for sixteen. Right? You said they just. Either well, they, you know what I mean. They they're either gonna, pay it off or they don't. Yeah. I don't think they're going to. I think you have. I think you have to stand your ground. It's like a mm. principle. You don't case. think you think it's you think it's more damaging for their name. It's a six year old kid. A lot of parents right now are stressed out. Kids are at home because they're yeah. not going to school. She's going to play that card. Oh, I gave it to my kid. I'm so busy. God forbid she's a single mom. 
Apple's going to look really bad. Well, they're going to look bad, but I understand it being a principle, you know, too, yeah. on their end of it. I, I mean, I, this would have been- It a, is going to make them look bad. Regardless, this is bad for them. Yeah, this would have this would have been a beating in my household. I'll tell you that much right now. Yeah, no, this is not- I mean, th- th- this is definitely the, the, the parents' responsibility to make sure they can't do it. Doug, <laughs> what the hell's happening? What are you doing over there, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? So Doug's watching his own show. Yeah. I love Doug. it when shit goes wrong and Doug's like- <laughs> 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 the problem is you open up a web page and all of a sudden it starts playing videos that I haven't requested. Yeah. Com- commercials and yeah, stuff. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. ask yeah, for this. Soccer, soccer moms yeah. get sweaty? That was a weird video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what have you been Googling? <laughs> What's going you on over there? Googler over there. So, <laughs> so, but see, here's the deal. $16,000 worth of, uh, of, of purchases uh, all by a kid buying random stuff. I mean, come on. That's so so here's, here's what I think. Okay. One... How many hours have, did you have to leave this kid alone playing video games stuck to his iPad? Of course. One, okay? That's big. And then two, there's many like uh, there's many other ways that when you purchase, you get an email for mm-hmm. it. They have to have a password in order to do it. So either I'm one- sure she got notified on her right, phone. There's notifications that come in. So this had to have been, like, she had been so disconnected. Mm-hmm. I, and this this happened over the course of like a month. You know what though? Dude? It's not like one. It's not like one big purchase. Like that'd be different, right? If if, if a, a kid got yeah. online and they bought ten thousand so dollars, pay attention to any of your finances, right? Too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars worth of uh, Apple products and use the mom's credit card. I bet you they refund it. But it's like this was over a month of consistently. Okay, but here's the deal: you try to make that case. You're Apple, right? The the one of the richest companies in the world. <clears throat> Well, you yeah. try to shame a mom <laughs> and make the case that she's a bad mom. Well, again, it's going to make them look bad. You're Terrible. right. You're right. But, Terrible. But what? it is. Like, come on, where's the personal responsibility? Like, of course. We, we've lost that uh, in general. It's You're- like, this is the whole thing with the, what was that case with McDonald's and the hot uh, coffee? Where that was stupid. Yeah, so she won. She yeah, won that, but yeah. that's the thing. It's like it. it I don't know. There, yeah. There's got to be some level of like, okay, it, what happened to you? Like, how much of that was your fault? Right. You're right. That's now that you're being logical. Now here's the problem. Yeah. If you're a big company, what you're thinking is, how is this going to make us look? Are we going to lose more money from from standing our ground? Well, that's probably why it made news, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it would, if they would have just, I mean, your you, to your point, you know, come on, sixteen thousand dollars is not even a speeding ticket for them. You know what I I'm saying? Know. Like it's that's like it's chump, nothing. Chump change. Exactly. So like they easily could have just thrown it her way, not told anybody about it. Right? Say, hey, no and, problem. Here you yeah, go. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Exactly. Right? right. Don't let this happen again. We're sorry. But then what I wonder See, now what I would do is if, if I was Steve, the 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 what's yeah, how the CEO, yeah. if I was the CEO and I. I saw this news i would come out and i'd be like this is terrible i can't believe that people handled this with you i really apologize i'm not only going to refund you the sixteen thousand dollars but we're going to give you a gift card for or whatever now what i and want make face you know what i mean say face do it now, publicly yeah what exactly. i wonder is if this is something that mm. happens all the time this just happens to be egregious and it's a single mother who's home with her kid and so it made news maybe mm-hmm. so what if like apple turns down one thousand five thousand three thousand four hundred dollars every single day hundreds of mm-hmm. these because people all come in saying oh my kid bought this oh my kid bought that and they're like no 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 Dude. and then the first one that's this big of a dollar amount yeah. and because maybe she's a single mom type of deal it's like oh this is big news yeah. what apple's the devil well you know Am- i've gotten yeah. refunded from amazon from ordering a movie <laughs> that i don't like have you guys done that before no no. I've ordered a movie, didn't like it. I sent them a message and they, they refunded me. What a oh, wow. great customer, great wow. customer service. Really? You did that? I did. Wow. I did. I didn't even know that works. Yep. It, well, I did it once. I give Katrina maybe, a hard time twice. for always like trying I've never to even thought of that. For trying to like she calls all the companies all the time and threatens we're going to switch services. You know we get a discount. All the time. It works. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the move. When yeah. you get pissed off. Yeah, you're yeah like, she's you know yeah. what? I'm going somewhere like else. Her, like, oh wait, let's see what we can do. Hey, yeah. here's a sec- okay. here's a secret to getting through. By the way, if you ever want to get through to a real person. Tell them you want to cancel. Yeah. So if you need customer certain, I know I'm trying to cancel right now. Next yeah. thing you know, hi, how can I help you? Yeah. Yeah, so I was trying to upgrade. So I was doing all yeah, these yeah. things, <laughs> and I realized I was getting uh, my, totally- f- My friend got this. Screamed. <laughs> hey, yeah. speaking speaking of stuff like this, uh, that video, did you guys see that video with Tom Cruise blasting? His, oh, uh, my friend? goodness. I mean, I heard the audio. Yeah, it was kind of funny. I mean, it was just him ranting because apparently some of his crew came without masks yeah. uh, to set. It's not that big of a deal. So I was expecting to hear him say some crazy shit. Shit. I mean, he said it. What he said was logical. Yeah, and he was just yelling. He was just yelling. Yeah. Are we getting that sensitive? Where you're, if your boss you yells, can't yell anymore? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> 
Do you, do you know what it was like? Well, I think it's just, I think it's Tom, it's getting Tom, hearing Tom Cruise, like, I mean, he was going off. He yeah, definitely yeah. was going off for a solid, like, what? It two, reminded two, me a little bit of, was it Christian Bale? Remember when he had it, that freak out that they caught on camera and he was just like yelling at everybody? No, but but it was really like vicious. It was crazy. No. Yeah, I should, you should look that one up too. But like, like, like Tom Cruise's, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that crazy. It was just like him, like being pissed off because like he wanted to make sure everybody could keep coming back to work. Yeah. And he really, you're risking the movie. I get all that. Yeah, I, I think that. it's ironic and funny that they're, they're getting to make movies. Of totally. Of course. Come on, they're dude. connected, dude. That is so hilarious to me that they are an essential business. They're well, not. That's all that's all our friend Newsom is doing. Oh, so that's exactly what yeah. it is. There was in fact there was one woman who had like, to close. Like, as if we don't have enough like we have more movies, okay? Because I mean they just keep piling up, piling up. They keep making them, making them, make them. Yeah. That you you could never get through the a fraction of all of them if you watch TV all day long. Don't, like we don't like, we, use, like we need movies. Don't try to use logic. Look, here's no. the deal. I'm not saying that movie should stop being made because yes, there's people that support themselves. Uh, I want new movies. What personally. I what I'm saying is like there was one woman. She had to close her salon, or I mean it might have been a restaurant or salon after she spent money on developing an outdoor area. Had to shut it all down. Yeah. Goes to goes the next day to her office, which is her location. After she shut it down, and sees tents set up in the parking lot with hundreds of chairs for movie crews because they got an exception yeah. to be able to run do their thing yeah and, that, and that's just it's, hypocrisy. it's just friends friends in high places in fact there's a a, a recall going around with newsom that's yeah. gaining steam do you guys see this no. uh, i did so here's the other thing too so please let this there's happen. a facebook page which i may or may not be a part of uh actually i'm not <laughs> a part of it but i've told aliens run done a little bit of signing uh but anyways the, it's all about you know recalling newsom and it's uh you know everybody on there there's four million people Right, mm -hmm. you need 1.5 million people to pass a recall, and this has been this way for a long time. And for some reason, they can't find enough people to to sign this this recalling petition. But there's four million people apparently interested in it. Well, it's it's actually a process. Have you tried? Have you signed? You have to go have, sign in I've, person uh, five times. Yeah, do the, <laughs> do the whole. <laughs> Last thing. time I was at Bass Shop, uh, yeah, signed too. Yeah, you got to go yeah. and you got to <clears> sign in person. That's what it is. You can't do it any other way. So yeah, no, but all of them said they did. Yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, that's. Weird. Oh, how funny is that? That there's like. Four, yeah, but you'd know that's not true. Uh, four million people didn't all go. Sign. It's probably not true, but it, let's just take you know like a small fraction of that. Still, there's a lot of momentum. That there. makes me lose faith in humanity, right? That we 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 talk a big talk and we're so angry about something and we bitch 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 bitch, but then it, oh, we have to go down to the place and sign. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't care that it. much. Yeah, yeah, I don't care that much. No, that, that yeah. totally happens. I'm just gonna stay online. Can I door dash yeah. the sign? Yeah. The yeah, signature, yeah. please. I'm just gonna stay home and <laughs> bitch about it. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my That's God. That's hilarious. Speaking of funny stuff, so uh, you guys know how YouTube has a strict, like, no nudity policy, right? Like, you can't. You can't see nipples on there. No, um, no nudity. Oh, we're unless you're, unless you're watching yoga. Dude, Don't expose it. What <laughs> the hell? Yeah. Okay, so this is already going away uh, because I did a little research uh, <laughs> yesterday. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, is this what, really a thing? Wait, 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 That's why you're in the bathroom wait, for wait, so I like to use the word research. What exactly is research? <laughs> it's research, you know, yeah. like you quality control. He was researching hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was trying to get Katrina into yoga yesterday. Yeah. I said, hey, you want to do some like, yoga, this real? I'm thinking like, about starting it up. So tell me about what happened. So, okay, so let me go first, and I want to yeah, hear your ahead. research. Yeah, Apparently, naked yoga is allowed on YouTube, and this isn't like this is not really yoga. I mean, it's yoga. I mean, I feel like they're really the good. The camera angles are like this I've, is downward dog. I mean, they're doing but the, the poses. Back. Yeah, dude, I mean, but it's it's she it's, looks certified to me. <laughs> it's yeah. pretend. Yoga's become porn nowadays, even on Instagram. Have you seen the yoga pages? Come on, yeah, now. dude, it's I ridiculous. Mean, they're coming up with new moves I've never seen. So what's the deal? They're taking it away. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just I was just searching the term naked yoga, and <laughs> like any American, you know, would would be interested in that. And um, I was waiting because you guys brought it up, and I couldn't see anything other than. And there was all these ones with like um, it was like a bait and switch where they had like a, a an image of you know this girl doing so, some yoga pose, but then it was they're trying to sell you cars. And I'm like, no, wow. like what's happening? Wow. Yeah, it wasn't, it's not that exciting. Okay. You know, that remind, I don't know if you guys have been watching uh, our you know, young friend, uh, Connor Murphy, right? So I've been getting all these messages in the last like month about him. Like everyone's just like, hey, what happened to Connor? It's not because he's been on our show a long time ago and we know him and every once in a while I'll text him and see how he's doing. 
then I, I messaged him, hey, how was doing, man? Oh, everything's great. And then uh, after that, I started like paying attention. Like I wasn't watching any of his stuff. I'm just, I mean, he's like younger generation, not really into the things that they're into. Uh, but I started watching his uh, Instagram and his YouTube. You become like a spiritual. <clears throat> oh, dude. But he it's, is, a, it's, it's fake, dude. It's a you, character. You think he's totally trolling? Yes. Come on, bro. 100%. Yeah. He, he told, and he's doing it outlandishly to see how far he can get away with it. It's totally baloney. It'd be yeah. great if he became like this guru because he just made up a whole like yoga. Yeah. What was he? What did he call it? I don't know what it was. Perso- per, uh, Persamete or some Persamate. Some so, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> he made up a yoga term. Yeah. That he's, Girls sitting on his lap and they're looking at each other and, and they like breathe together <laughs> and they, like do th- and, like move around. Yeah, it's basically dry humping while you yeah, look at someone. It's like, what are you doing? Dude, yeah. the spiritual space. I think it's brilliant. Actually. That spiritual space is becoming so. It's interesting, I, I, right? We've seen a couple of people that we know that have like pivoted into this all of a sudden, like spiritual reader and medium and all that stuff like that. And there's a lot, there's no, a lot. I think he's really smart, dude. I, you know, like that's a, that's a whole segment that needs to be, uh, <clears throat> you, you know, exposed. And also he's doing it in a funny way where it's like, I mean, it's, I'm with Justin. I think it's smart too. I think it's yeah. very smart. And oh, I think he's going to reveal at some point. Oh, I don't think a he game, is. Or it's going to become a character. People like to watch. That's but, what I think. Yeah. You think yeah. so? Yeah. So, so you, back to the naked yoga, what's the deal? They're taking it away. Yeah. Well, it's not, you can only find, a, so there's like one, video i think it was what the, the like when we were looking at it because you know you guys were in on this too in the beginning um he just has to like yeah i gotta throw you guys in yeah. the um <laughs> <laughs> you exposed me to it, it i couldn't sal, find sal, any of the right? same sal was the one who introduced it to I, us right i think maybe i think maybe what happened was this, this might have been a concerted effort from maybe it was like a, a porn company or something and then they just uploaded it all at once and then maybe youtube's algorithms finally caught up to it that's mm. my theory so no does it, no, it, no it no there was an article so this is how oh, wait it doesn't pop up anymore this is how we originally no, heard it about up. it this is how we originally heard about it there Doug, was an you- article about how it's uh it's allowed because there's some like some like uh like side rule or whatever because side it's rule. yoga <laughs> side it's rule. it's they they allow it even though it's naked <sighs> yeah but you can see everything it's oh like, it's, it's not like they're you know just doing poses and being uh conservative about it no no oh you're right like the one i was watching yesterday looks like it's gone that's lame <laughs> <laughs> Hearing gone, you know. I'm sorry oh, to be. They probably got a lot of complaints. Yeah. What about the one that I sent over to the group thread? Is that? Did you guys look that one back? I, have, I didn't even see that. I have no idea. Really? What are you talking about? We don't do stuff like that. It's still there. Like, no, it's gone. Yeah. You're right. I told you. Justin? I bet you a lot of people sorry, complained. Guys. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I, I think it was like they just they just tried to do oh, it all yeah. fast. This video has been removed for violating YouTube's policy of nudity and sexual content. Yeah. Wow, I thought she. So was they really, allowed it. They really snuck good, it in yeah. real fast. They allowed it for a second, and then it looks like they probably got enough complaints where they took it off. Yeah, because the video- how cra- how random is that that we just kind of found it? It seems like I one know. of you guys is probably searching that every day and just got lucky. Yeah. So we- dumb, huh? No, somebody. <laughs> Think so. No, there was an art. There were article. <laughs> Doug, Doug, do this. Why well, are you getting so defensive right now, guy? Huh? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you guys trying to get me in trouble? Huh? <laughs> Doug, Google. So defensive right now. Google naked yoga yeah. and then look up the new and then click on news and read the news or naked yoga YouTube and look at news and you guys will see. So they must have gotten a lot of complaints. Yeah, I'm, about- I'm sure. About this whole deal, yeah. Oh, what a, sure. well, that's a bummer. Interesting. Well, I mean, it I know was cool for a second. Adam was like, "Well, pff, I'll do some naked weight <laughs> training like, videos." Finally, yoga is interesting. <laughs> yeah, crush crushes our. Uh, <clears throat> see, people are uploading naked <laughs> yoga videos. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess it must have gotten enough people to complain. Yeah, though, I mean, literally the one I sent yesterday uh, to the group thread, I, you can't see no more. Wow. Yeah. Doug, click on images real quick. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Memories. Anyway, dude, yeah. I, you want to talk about crazy stories. Mm. Do you, are you guys familiar with a woman by the name of Miriam Rodriguez? Mm. That sounds a little familiar, yeah. but I don't know. I don't, I don't Tell don't know us. Know <laughs> Probably have a cousin named. So, <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's like two racist things in like one month. You gotta come back, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, no. something like that. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I got you. <laughs> so this is a crazy yeah. story uh, that um, uh, I, I read the other day. I can't believe I didn't hear about it before. So this woman's twenty-year-old daughter was uh, kidnapped by drug cartels. They kidnapped her daughter. Daughter. They tried to ransom her and ended up murdering her daughter. So this woman in her 60s. What? Okay, this is a true story. This woman in her 60s hunted down 10 members of this cartel. Shut up. One by one. And she would- Dude, they're going to make a movie out of it. Oh, 100% that'll be a movie. Look her up. That's her right there. 
She stalked them, uh, the killers, across Mexico one by oh, one. Oh, it gives me chills, dude. And no what a way. She no would, way. She yes, got them? Yeah, so hold on. So she would put on uh, disguises. She would talk to their grandparents because she's an older woman, and the grandparents of these drug, you know, these cartel members didn't know any better and would give them clues. Uh-huh. And one by one, she got them arrested is what she would do. She would hunt them down, uh. get them all arrested. Finally, she finds one, one of the last guys she finds – she she's approaching him because she heard. I don't know how she found out that this guy was selling things on the street. She finds him. He sees her. She, he runs. She tackles him, no holds, a, holds a gun to his throat, and holds her there so that he gets arrested. Finally, the cartel caught up to her and killed her. Oh and so God. now they in the in the town that she's from, they've built a monument about her, and it's totally spurring this like movement of the people against the cartels. Wow. Like she's become this martyr. This hero, a hero for uh, you know to fight against these cartels. Damn, wow, what an awesome story! How wow. crazy is that? Right, that is way crazy. She's like sixty something years old, and she hunted down ten of them. Yeah, ten and got them. You know, fearless. That's you know? badass. I love that. One hundred percent a movie. One hundred percent a movie. Yeah. After such that. a crazy movie. Where I mean, did you come? Where did you read that? Uh, I don't remember where I read it. Um, I don't remember. I think it was in one of the because this is recent. Called. This is recent. Yeah. Um, I want to say it's recent. That I article so. Doug's going through right now. I thought it said one day ago. Is it really? Oh, I thought it said that. Let's Is that said Doug? Let me see. <clears throat> it looked like it was really recent. Yeah. When yeah. is this? When is it? Yeah, thirteenth. Yeah, so month. it's a new thing. Yeah. So wow. she, they just got up to her and they killed. They just caught up to her. So now they're going to build like a monument to her, mm-hmm. and it's it's invoking this movement uh, against the cartels. Wow. You know, sometimes all you need is that example yeah. to stir up enough oh, that's popular powerful, support. I mean, yeah, this, I feel that this happened in Sicily in the eighties. Uh, in the eighties, the there was a, a a judge that really aggressively went after the mafia. I've told this story before. And um, and back in the eight, you know, the, the Sicilian kind of relationship with the mafia, especially back then, was keep it quiet or whatever, or you know, don't go after them. We're afraid. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, this judge was was jailing them left and right. Had all this protection, and the way that they got to this judge, the way that they finally got to kill, because he had so many armed guards, and he he would switch cars and whatever. The way that they got to him is as he was in an armed car with guards, along with traffic, they blew up an entire bridge that he was on, killed him, killed his family, killed a bunch of innocent people. Well, that caused so much anger in Sicily that there was this huge movement against the mafia, and it was just this huge, they jailed so many of them. So I feel like this right here, this this might cause a movement, you know? Yeah, wow, that's let's really, hope. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's an amazing story. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. really, really crazy. Anyway, um, we're supposed to bring up Magic Spoon, um, but I wanted to do something a little interesting, Adam. Hmm. I know you love macros and stuff like that. I do. Yeah, you being the... X-body and I guy. also love Magic Spoon. Madam's mm-hmm. Macros. Yes. So I pulled up some comparisons. So you're going to trip off this, right? So wh- what would you consider to be like a, a normal serve? I'm going to use like normal servings of cereal, not what they say on the boxes. A lot of times they'll be like, you know, quarter, three quarters of a cup. Or yeah, cup no. I, yeah. And so I actually just did this. I think I told you guys when I measured out my uh, granola, right? And I measured two cups of granola out and two cups didn't even fill up my little bowl. Halfway. So would you say three cups is probably <clears throat> yeah, that's an average good, size bowl? I would say three is even on the low end a little bit. Okay. I would say between three and four is what a normal kind of like what most the average American pours a, far, a bowl of cereal. In okay, so three cu- I would agree, right? Three cups seems like a pretty normal bowl of cereal. Mm-hmm. So Fruit Loops, let's compare Fruit Loops to Magic Spoon's fruit, uh, you know, uh, base cereal or whatever. So comparison in terms of Fruity. flavor. Fruity, right. So three cups of Fruit Loops, this is not including the milk. 75 grams of carbs, 36 grams of sugar. That's three tablespoons of sugar in a normal bowl of Fruit Loops. Mm. Three grams of protein, so like no protein yeah, at all. barely any. Magic spoon, three cups, 40 grams of carbs, so a, a little bit more than half or almost half. Yeah. Zero grams of sugar, not a single gram of sugar, 44 grams of protein. Yeah. yeah. 44 grams of protein. Yeah. One bowl. Zero sugar, 40 grams of protein. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, and if you put milk in there, if you're on a bulk, you put whole milk, you've got yourself a pretty damn good do you guys see meal. They, do you guys see they made their way finally into like the bodybuilding community, like the Paige Hathaways? Because about Chase, time. They're, yeah. all, uh, they're yeah. all hyping, talking it about. We knew they'd adopt it at some point. I know. I know. that the Magic Spoon has just now made their way over to that community. That community is like blowing it up like crazy. I knew that was going to be like what really skyrocketed them because I mean the- I don't know. I, I, t- I don't know how it didn't do that already. I'm surprised it took this long I, well I, I don't well, think the the owners of the company I don't think that was their original direction was they I don't think they were thinking that like yeah. unless you're in the the space and uh, you really get like the whole macro thing and like how bodybuilders are 
our competitors with their diet and finding something like this that could fit in their macros. Oh my God. Like, but if you're not in it, you just, you, they, they were trying to make a healthier cereal. That, yeah. That's it. For the general population, it was really designed for GP. It was like, yeah. what are kids eating right now? Can we make a better, healthier version for the, the masses? Not realizing that the, the market who I think would mm. really blow it up. And I've, we always thought this was bodybuilding. Yeah, another, so it's, another, it's there now. Another way to use it too is uh, as a dry snack. Yeah. When and I don't encourage That's how this. Ka- this is how Katrina's mom eats it. Oh, really? See, I, don't, I, don't, dry. I don't encourage people. You know, I don't encourage snacking in front of the TV. But we do it anyway, right? Movies on. You want to eat something in front of the TV. Well, ninety nine percent of any snack you eat in front of the TV is a carbohydrate based yeah. snack. Yeah. You're not going to get protein out of anything. You could eat jerky in front of the TV, which I do. But I know a lot of people like the crunch and kind of sweetness or whatever. Magic spoon cereal. You yeah. just have a bowl of it. That's and Katrina, eating, and Katrina, it's protein. Katrina's mom doesn't even use milk. She just just she eats it dry. Exactly. And she yeah. loves it. And she likes it. Yeah, mm-hmm. my kids are like they'll, they'll eat it dry. I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah. Justin, I want to ask you. You were uh, like itching to tell us about some new Star Wars theory. Yeah. Right? So uh, yeah, I was a little bit, and like I know, like I went off on another one of those episodes where I just kind of went down the rabbit hole for Star Wars. So hopefully I don't lose everybody here. But uh, uh, basically, this is all about Boba Fett because we we he got introduced into the series uh and it, we're kind of wondering like where what happened to him because he was uh uh basically was swallowed by this this monster like last time we've we saw him he fell into the pit and he's supposed to be digested for like a thousand years mm. uh i forget what the name of the the monster is but anyway the the, the theory is is that basically the very beginning of uh, season two we see this other type of like dragon sand worm that's like going through the town and yes. like eating all this stuff, right? And then, but he now resides in the Sarak, I think is the name of the uh, monster, but like there's a there's an emptied out cave where it lives now. And so that he basically lives where that 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 monster that was the pit monster uh, used to live. Uh, and so the theory is that basically that that dragon like ate that um, uh, you know the, the pit monster he ate him oh. and because he had he he spit out this acid and everything and so basically we like digested him and then you saw that Mando purposely got swallowed by uh, you know the, the the sandworm and then basically blew his way out but he was unaffected because of his uh, Beskar armor mm. so basically. You know, they're the kind of correlating that between uh, Boba Fett was able to basically blow himself up, blow himself up, and like he was fine because, like, you know, the that was what I told you, right? When you I, did. I said that. Yeah. I was like, when they, I thought it was interesting that they showed us that scene, and I felt like this was before he got introduced to the show. That we we saw this whole scene where he goes into the belly, blows it up, and comes out, and then all of a sudden we get introduced to Boba Fett. Yeah. It's like, oh, I bet you they did that. To show you it's yeah. possible to that that's why he's still alive. So right? that's the theory, and I was like, oh, that's a great theory. And also, I was watching, like, just to, to fall asleep, I was watching A New Hope, like the very first Star Wars movie. And and uh, <laughs> you're so funny, dude. You rewatch these, these things. I watch them all the time, dude. Like <laughs> just to fall asleep. Just fall asleep. Yeah, it's mm. it's, it's I don't know. It's comforting. Wonderful somewhat. Slumberland. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I use it for that. Dude. Your, you guys your, don't have a movie like that? With your Star Wars blankie? Yeah, it's like my little Star Wars blankie. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I sleep Lightsaber with it. Lightsaber pacifier? Yeah. It's, it's so, like, basically the scene where where Luke is is out trying to find R2-D2, and, and he gets, like, attacked by one of the Tusken Raiders, and he and gets hit and knocked out with one of them. It, it, that that one um, uh, weapon that they used, they the, Boba Bulbas. Fett had it. That's yeah. where it came yeah, from. Yeah, so it was a Tuscan Raider, and so now it's like, well, I guess you know we're, we're finding out more about the Tuscan Raiders and how they actually are, you know, like more inviting and nicer than they've portrayed them yeah. to be. They're the ones uh, that are, oh! We're just we just been yeah everybody's just been assholes to them I guess. But so like he he has their weapons. I was like I knew that's where I recognized that. So you think he blew up the sand monster, knocked himself out. Tuscan Raiders found Tuscan him. Tuscan Raiders found him, raised him. Yeah, this, the armor meanwhile gets. Well, they didn't raise him, but yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The, the 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 armor gets taken because he's blown up. He's whatever. Yes, they bring him back to life. He learns the ways of the Tuscan yeah. Raiders and how to use the staff or the oh. um, uh, the Jawas like came by and and took his armor and then you know and then uh, the, that's where it ended up somewhere else. Boom. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Boom. It's solved. First question is from Harmon the Hinger. Any tips or ways to manipulate a flat bench press to make it like an incline bench press? Oh, yeah. Good question. Hmm. So, so in other words, you want to hit the upper chest effectively. You don't have access to an incline bench. All you have is a flat bench. 
what you can you do? There's an old school bench press variation exercise that you don't see too many people do uh, at all nowadays. And I understand why it's, uh, you want to make sure that you're safe when you do it, but it does a pretty damn good job of hitting the upper chest. And that is bench press to the neck. I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but you bring the barbell way up high uh, to the collarbone or slightly above the collarbone on a flat bench, Mm. elbows really, really flared out. And then you squeeze the upper chest at the top. It's a great exercise for the upper chest. You need to have have good shoulder mobility. Of course. And (laughs) if you you don't want to say that's a little sketchy. (laughs) Yes. Uh, I feel like right towards your neck. Yeah. I feel like I have a better one than that. Um, we, you get a stability ball that costs 20 bucks on Amazon and ship to your house the next day. And you do a bench, but what you do is just drop your hips. Mm-hmm. So instead of creating a bridge and doing a normal uh, uh, press, you let the hips drop down and now it's an incline press. That's why I love the stability. But in fact, we used to do we used to uh, uh, incline press on that all the time. That was mm-hmm. like one of my favorite ways to do it because mm-hmm. you can adjust the incline by dropping your hips higher or lower. So that's true. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. another thing you can do, yeah, cheap way to uh, do it. that I used to do when I was a kid uh, was I would take the flat bench and I would put the back up on some uh, blocks. Mm -hmm. So I'd make my own incline, right? So I'd have two by fours that were stable. I'd set it up and now I could do an incline. You could also do elevated push-ups with your feet elevated. Mm -hmm. That's going to hit the upper chest, you know, quite effectively as well. Next question is from Jamil A144. Why does my grip struggle on pull-ups, but not on deadlifts? That's an interesting question. I don't know. Do you guys feel when when you guys do pull-ups, your grip feels stronger or weaker than when it would, would do deadlifts? Yeah, I don't know if it's um, I. I don't know if I. I've heard this before. Like this has been something that like uh, somebody that I know was like very good at deadlifting, but like had a hard time with the actual grip and and had a harder time with pull ups than they did deadlifts. Which to me was crazy because it was like they were at least doing four four fifty, you know, pulling off the ground, but then had a hard time like holding on, uh, you know, in a vertical position. So I was actually curious to hear your guys' answers on this. Uh, whether like it's it's a difference in grip. Uh, you know, from the bar, like what kind of techniques they're using with that. I mean, it's really not that much different yeah, though, as I, far as I, how, how you grip and, you know, I, God, that's weird to me, right? Like, well, I would imagine, so think of the position, right? If you have <clears throat> tight, uh, if, you're, if you're tight in the upper body and especially with shoulder mobility and you're in this kind of stretched overhead position where you're hanging, mm-hmm. that might compromise your grip, right? Mm. Because not only you're trying to grip, but you're so tight and you're keeping everything tense. You might lose some strength. In your I think that's a good guess. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it doesn't. So it doesn't make sense to me. Logical. Like if you were, if you're able to deadlift uh, significantly more than your body weight, right? So if you weigh 200 pounds and you're deadlifting 400, mm-hmm. it would be weird to your grip to go out unless something like what you just said. Mm-hmm. You have really tight lats, tight shoulders. And then in that stretch position, you're completely yeah. stretched out, so you're weaker. Well, this is where I would think, you know, having that lockout position and doing like an overhead carry would really start help, you know, building up strength and stability in that position to, to then feel more comfortable and yeah. uh, stable. Uh, maybe maybe it's a lack of stability. Also, I'll say this. This does highlight something that is, uh, is true, and it's also very interesting, and that is uh, how specific strength can be. You can yeah. do... Two movements that look very similar and be excellent in one and not so good in the other one. I'll give you an example, right? If you do like a bench press with a barbell versus a dumbbell flat press, they both look almost identical. They really do. It's a very similar movement. You're on a flat bench. You're pressing up. But I've known people who could bench press tremendous amounts of weight with a barbell and handle very – they can't go very heavy at all Mm -hmm. with dumbbells. And then I've seen vice versa. I've seen people with dumbbells be able to handle a lot of weight. And then when they grab the barbell, it, it doesn't make any sense uh, in terms of how much you know more they can or, or they can't lift. So strength can be very, very specific. Uh, a lot of strength isn't just the muscle, right? So the muscle's involved. It's contracting. It's holding. It's lifting. But a lot of strength has to do with technique and skill. There's a lot of skill involved with lifting. For example, if you practice squats all the time and you get really, really good at squats and then let's say you lose – uh, access to a barbell squat, uh, but you can do all these other leg exercises. You don't lose any size uh, in your quads and your hamstrings and your glutes. Um, on an individual basis, the muscles remain just as strong. When you finally, after a few months, go back under a barbell, you'll probably still be weaker uh, with your squats because you haven't practiced the skill. So there's that specificity that right. is, uh, is, is You're pretty just interesting. You're familiar with that uh, T- position. Totally. So if you want to get a stronger grip in the pull-up position, 
the best thing you could do is practice your grip mm -hmm. in the pull-up position, not in any other position. Next question is from Yoga Farm Girl. Why the anti-cardio vibes? Running brings me joy. You yeah. know, we haven't, we haven't addressed Why? it. And then the rest of that says you guys should totally interview Charlie Rocket, who's been trying to get on our show for like three years now. I don't know who that is. Who's yeah, that? it's the guy who lost 100 pounds running all over the place. Okay. You've seen him. You've seen him before. Blonde guy. He's been on a bunch of other podcasts. He reached out to us a couple okay. of years ago. Okay. And <clears throat> well, I'll address the first one first. Uh, I, I think why it comes off as we are anti-cardio is because we, we know who the, the general population and the average client that we trained and who we're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and one of the, the greatest challenges that we had as trainers was most people that think about losing weight think about cardio and running first. Yeah. And we know that that is not the best approach at all, at all. But are there some people that we would train or there's people that we know that love to run? And they have they get joy from it, and it's meditation for them. I would never rob somebody of that, and I would never be anti cardio or anti running for that person. I think that if going out for a beautiful run gives you joy and helps you burn some calories and and gives you energy and is uh, you and it's like your meditation, like I would never take that away from mm -hmm. you. But what I what we want to do is educate the masses on cardio is one of the worst ways for you to try and lose fat, and that's where this gets all confusing for people is they hear us say that stuff, and then they're like, oh, I've had all or like you use someone like Charlie Rocket, okay? You give me an example of somebody who ran their hundred pounds off, okay? Well, I can give you an example of somebody who jump roped hundred pounds off or you know, did push-ups for 100 pounds off or did nothing and got 100 pounds off. Like a, a single story about somebody who did something to lose 100 pounds is not what we think helps. Jared from Subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah eat Subway sandwiches lost weight. and lose weight. Like there's examples of people that have done uh, lots of tremendous great things to get themselves to lose weight. We always try and think of who are who is the majority of the clientele that we trained and what were some of the biggest hurdles and challenges that they had? And one of those is manually trying to burn fat, mm -hmm. is trying to run the calories off. And what happens is most people that come in to hire a personal trainer or most people that tune into Mind Pump that are getting back into fitness, where they're at with their metabolism, uh, running is one of the worst things that they can do to start off. And yeah. that's really hard for our, our small percentage of people that listen to us that love to run. But if you've been listening long enough to us, you know that we've told you, like, listen, if you like to run, I'm not telling you not to run. Right. Well, and, I, and I'll let Sal get into the whole, like, building your metabolism and, and all the benefits of building muscle and stuff. But uh, really, like, I'm concerned about the repetitive stress. And, and that's just something that you – inevitably, you're doing the same thing for long periods of time. And, you know, the intensity might come up a bit, but your body is just going to start to break down. Uh, and you need to change it up. And, and if you're not switching up, uh, you know, what type of activity you do and what type of stimulation you're getting for your muscles uh, – uh, you know, there's a window to that. And so I think that we're just always trying to point out that you really need to lift weights. Like yeah. that, that's something that needs, it benefits your running. It benefits, look at your running as an activity that you really love and enjoy, or maybe you compete with it or whatever. That's totally fine. But that's not like, that's not the only health practice. Like you need to incorporate uh, these other methods to be able to keep the longevity of things you enjoy. Yeah. Cardiovascular activity is great for health. A uh, terrible way to burn, to lose weight. That's all. So most which people- which is what most people want. Right, right. But it's fine. It's fine for health. It's got great health benefits. Um, but if you're like the average person and you don't have uh, time to exercise every day and your goal is to lose body fat and you like food um, and you live in a modern society with lots of food around you, you, the best strategy is to speed up your metabolism and lift weights because you don't need to do that every day to, to elicit that adaptation. Cardiovascular activity needs to often do be done every single day uh, to really reap the, any of the calorie burning benefits. But even then, if you do that for long enough, your body starts to adapt and it doesn't really give you that benefit. And then here's the other side of it. You know, uh, Justin brought up the stress on the body. Uh, here's the truth. The human body evolved to run. That is true. Uh, we're actually running machines, okay? But don't get too excited. It's a skill that we've all forgotten, okay? Yeah. So if you've been running since you were a child and you have not stopped, you probably run wonderfully and will never get injured. 
If you're like most people, you stopped running uh, around sixth grade, <laughs> um, and then you decide when you're 30 you want to go running, you don't have that skill anymore. You go outside and you run, and you don't think to yourself, I need to relearn how to run. I need to perfect the skill. You think to yourself, I need to go work out and sweat. And so you push yourself to fatigue with running, and your technique is terrible, and the injuries are uh, insane. Uh, running is uh, responsible for, I think, more injuries than almost any other form of, uh, of exercise in the mainstream. And it's mainly because we just don't know how to run. Here's the thing, too. Once you forget that skill, it takes a while to relearn it. So it's not like you, you know, again, if you're listening and you haven't run since you were in sixth grade, like most people, and you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to go give myself a couple weeks or a month to kind of get into the skill of running. It's going to take a year or two. It takes a long time. You literally forgot how to do it. And so when you go and push yourself running, mm -hmm. you hurt yourself. And so that's the big problem uh, with it. But other than that, cardio is another form of exercise. And if you're being active, that's wonderful. It's better than not being active. If you have limited time though, fat loss is your goal. You want to build insurance against the problems of modern life. A better investment is resistance training. I think a better way to say that is that uh, running right, right? People think that they, you, if you ask somebody who runs all the time, they think that they run fine and they, they have mm -hmm. the skill of running. Like, and someone listening right now is going like, really? How hard is it to learn to run? I can go run right now. Maybe I haven't done it in 10 years, but I could go run. You can do it. But you don't do it correctly. I could swing a golf club too. Well, but I don't have the technique. And to not it. to mention too, like people that run, like you're, you're mentioning burning fat, and they think that they're going to keep, uh, you know, the same muscle mass that they have. Like your body's going to start, you know, shedding weight everywhere. And, and that's the thing is that you get more efficient at it, you get good at it, and like yes, we've evolved to to run, but that's a totally different body than you think uh, you're, you're you're getting after. Right. And er there's not a single client, okay, and two decades of training that I have, and I would imagine you guys are close to that, if not as similar, that I've ever trained that I did not get them and assess them and find all kinds of issues, imbalances, pronating the feet, knees collapsing in, anterior pelvic tilt, the uh, forward head, rounded totally. shoulders. They've got all these these posture issues because we mm. sit down all day long and they have all this these overactive, underactive muscles that are tight and pulling on the body and causing chronic hip pain, back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, all these things going on with them. And they also want to lose weight. And then they think that running is a great way. And it couldn't be it couldn't be further from the truth. You take somebody with all those posture issues and they repetitively run outside on concrete or on a treadmill all that pounding does is exaggerate all those problems. Mm -hmm. So all it's going to do is speed up to getting to that injury or speed up to that being worse. More and it, okay, to take it even a step further, uh, if you live in America, if you grew up in America or in in most modern Western societies, you've been wearing shoes yeah. for most of your life. Right. Now that's okay if Unless you. You're my son. That's okay if you walk around and you're just living. Around. But if you if you want to to have the skill of running the way that our bodies evolved to run. Yeah, you need strong feet. It's not with shoes. Okay, there, there's been, been studies on this. There's actually cultures in the world. I know in, in Kenya, there's a, a, a there's a, a, a area in Mexico where mm -hmm. people run since they're children. And when you watch their gait and the way that the foot hits the ground, it's totally, totally different. Di totally yeah. different than the yeah. way you run when you wear big, cushiony shoes. In fact, running shoes are designed to compensate for our terrible running. Mm -hmm. When you run naturally, they actually hit with the forefoot first. The foot, with all of its muscles, and the ankle and all of its muscles, actually acts as a shock absorber. You're not supposed to land heel first. That's a terrible way to run. Yeah. But if you, if you, if you, again, if you're living in a modern society, you wear big running shoes, how do you run? Heel first. You always hit heel first. That's why you got big pads on the bottom of your shoes. But when you run, when you watch these people, if you go watch a modern hunter gatherer society, go look at the Hadza tribe, watch them run. They're barefoot, four foot first, and they run well into their 70s and 80s without any problems. So, no, this is a, a skill that 99% of us totally forgot. If you want to learn that skill, give yourself a couple of years, good coaching, uh, and practice. Don't run to work out, practice to run. But I, most people don't care about that. They don't really care. They just want to burn body fat. Yeah, that's... In that's, which case, go lift weights. And that's the reason why we come off like we're anti, because we know what most... Like, I'm not anti to someone who says, Adam, I love to run. Can I run? Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not anti that person. That's hardly anybody. Right. You know, yeah. most people are like... I want to burn fat. I want to burn fat. I want to look better. I want to feel better. What do I need to do? And if, if it's look better, feel better, uh, running is not the answer for me. So and, and, unless you're somebody who enjoys that as, as part of the process, then... Then yeah, and then in that case, uh, I'm not anti. I'm all for it. Next question is from Flaw4581. 
What sport community do you feel generally underutilizes or totally overlooks weightlifting? You know, these days, luckily, most sports uh, utilize some form of resistance training. It wasn't like this not that long ago. You I don't, know, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I'm looking at, he gave some examples, rock climbers, endurance, runners, cyclists. cyclists. You know, I'm trying to think, is, is there anybody at the most elite level in any of those sports or any other sport for that matter that has not learned that strength training has got to be part of the routine? I, I wouldn't say at the elite level. I think at the elite level by now, everybody utilizes some form of resistance right. training to strengthen the body or protect, at least protect against injuries. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know 30, 40 years ago, uh, a lot of athletes didn't use it. Before that, it was nobody. You know, I think it was football players. If we're not, if I'm not mistaken, were the first mainstream athletes to use football. Excuse me, uh, resistance training. But before that, if you lifted weights, they said you would get muscle bound. Uh, mm -hmm. You'd lose your athleticism, which isn't which isn't. Oh, true that at was all. big in the baseball community. Is like uh, they were trying so hard not to develop muscles in the upper body, especially because they thought it would slow down your bat swing. Yeah, and then Mark McGuire come out and <laughs> yeah, it crushed him. everybody. That's right. Yeah, I would say uh, mainstream. Forget the elite, because at the elite, everybody does resistance training now. It's just changed according to the sport. But just kind of mainstream, I'd say endurance athletes. Endurance athletes, when I would train clients. Uh, or when I worked in gyms, the endurance athletes were the ones that were the least likely to want to do any resistance training. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, they were also the most blown away when they'd incorporate it. I used mm -hmm. to love taking uh, triathletes and you know marathon runners. I actually trained a couple uh, runners that ran um, uh, century runs where they would run 100 miles. And we would do resistance training appropriate, right? So I would correctional exercise and I, you know pr injury prevention time resistance training. And they would just, they would come back and be like, I can't believe I didn't do this before. It's like, I am so much faster. I don't hurt as much. Um, it's been such an uh, incredible addition to my routine. I mean, granted, it wasn't, it wasn't much. It was once a week. But uh, it made a huge difference. But yeah, I had some cyclists. I think that was a community that um, uh, definitely, like, uh, my client was interested in it and found the benefits of it, especially in uh, when when he needed to go up hills and gain that power and extra strength and, and found a lot of uh, resiliency from working out. It kept him from getting injured as often. He used to get injured a lot more when he'd fall off his bike and, you know, break his collarbone or like other, uh, you know, muscles and, and things would tear. And so, you know, there was a lot of benefit there, but he would always express to me like how much it was needed in that community. Not a lot of people were uh, seeing the benefit to, to also like lifting weights to you know to m promote uh, more uh, performance in cycling. Well, I, I would agree. I think endurance. If there's any, if there's anywhere, because I think at the at the highest level, I think they all do. But if there's anywhere, I'd say endurance because they can get away with it the most. You can be still pretty damn good of an it's endurance like energy efficiency. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that, and we talk about this all the time, right? Like nothing is going to get you better to your sport than doing your sport more and more, and that's an endurance sport. So you got to do it a lot to get mm -hmm. good at it. So you become a very good, you know, uh, swimmer, runner, you know, cyclist for long distance by just doing lots of that and and be okay and probably pretty damn competitive. And the weight training is not going to, you know, benefit as much as somebody who's obviously more of a strength sport, right? Yeah. And then the key is also um, doing the resistance training appropriately for the sport. If I take an endurance athlete and I train mm -hmm. them with weights wrong, uh, I'm going to make them a worse. Yeah, endurance athlete. Um, yeah, hurt him. Same thing with any other uh, athlete. It's a totally different approach. And like I'm, I'm tr when I'm training endurance athletes with resistance training, I'm pr injury prevention. I'm increasing stability. Um, I'm working on muscles to promote posture because running biomechanics start to get decelerating less, muscles, things like that. Exactly, yeah. totally. Um, I've worked with uh, dancers with resistance training, um, and again, uh, and they had to maintain their aesthetics, right? Because mm -hmm. they're on stage. So I'm not trying to build tons of strength and muscle, but what I am trying to do is support their uh, increase their supports and stability so that they can maintain their posture and do their moves better or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it has to be applied appropriately, but but uh, you know, the, the core of resistance training is strengthening. So if it's applied properly, it will just strengthen your positions and strengthen your technique. And that's the thing that you need to understand uh, about it. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug at Mind Pump Doug. 
I didn't do these uh, these ten minute workouts or sometimes go to the gym just squat or just deadlift. That that mm-hmm. wasn't until way later in my career, like thirty on. And it's for the reasons that Sal just brought up. Like right, you could think ten minutes, like ten minutes. I'm, you know, barely. What do I burn a hundred calories? Yeah, or waste something? of time. Yeah, waste of time. All I have to do is have two, you know, two Hershey kisses, and it's already 